Why do you like watching movies more than reading books? Or better, why do you like playing video games more than reading books? For example, would you rather read a story about the ancient city of Pompeii or build the city in Minecraft? Are the coders at Mojang better storytellers than, say, J.K. Rowling or Roald Dahl? No? Then why do over 100 million people play countless hours of Minecraft every day while the same individuals pick up Harry Potter, read it once, and go back to playing Minecraft. In 2011, I bought an iPad 2, and after spending countless hours reading, researching, and watching videos, I was finally able to get three stars on Angry Birds. Every time. But then I realized, hey, I can use this in the classroom the iPad, not Angry Birds. I'm an English teacher, not a physics teacher. Now, one thing that impressed me most about the iPad was its potential for the creation of stories. As an English teacher for the past 12 years, I've used storytelling as a catalyst for learning. I've challenged students like you to create imaginative and creative stories. However, for struggling readers and writers, story writing can be a nightmare. We've all sat down in front of that blank notebook page and thought, how am I going to turn this into a story? Where do I begin? Who are my characters going to be? How does it end? And for students like this, they often give up. But it was my job as their teacher to help them find the story inside them. And that's when I decided to use the iPad for digital storytelling. Now, digital storytelling is a lot older than you think. Way back in the early 1990s, digital storytelling was taking shape at UC Berkeley in California. A man by the name of Joe Lambert and his colleague Dana Atchley had created a digital storytelling workshop that would help people express themselves through picture, video, and narration. Now at the time, digital storytelling was kind of primitive compared to what you know today. However, the Software like iMovie or Windows Movie Maker was very accessible to students. So if you want to picture a digital story from the early 90s, think about a PPT or a keynote with voiceover. Today, with everyone having a computer in their pockets, digital storytelling has never been so exciting or so much fun. Let me tell you a story about how I first experimented with digital storytelling. My daughter is seven. I'm sorry, my daughter's nine in Korean age. She's very artistic. She's very creative. Um, she likes singing, dancing, playing the piano. Ever since she's discovered YouTube, she's been singing and dancing up a storm every weekend. However, writing is probably her least favorite activity. In fact, I think she'd rather go to the dentist than write a story, especially in English. But she's not alone. Many young readers and writers have trouble expressing themselves on paper. So what can we do to help students like my daughter to write? Well, being the sneaky dad that I am, I tricked my daughter into writing her first story. I introduced her to an app called Toontastic. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with the app, Toontastic is a cartoon app by Launchpad Toys where the children can create backgrounds, customize characters, and animate their stories just by moving their fingers along the screen. Needless to say, my daughter loved the app, and before I could even explain to her how to use it, she had already created her first story. So then I thought, maybe now she's ready to start writing her stories down. So I asked her, Asia, would you like to create your own book? And she said, OK. But then she looked at me kind of suspiciously and said, do I have to write it down? I was like, well, yes. No, thank you. I almost had her, but I needed a new plan. So I asked her again, Asia, would you like to use the iPad to create your story? Wouldn't that be more fun? And she was like, OK, Daddy, but I'm still not writing it down. My daughter was pretty adamant about not writing down her story, but I wasn't too worried about it. So she got started on creating her story. She carefully chose her backgrounds. She customized her characters. She added her own music. She even added some of her own singing. But after watching the recording, she wasn't too happy with it. She noticed that it was kind of unorganized, and she ummed and odd through most of it. So now was my chance to finally nudge her towards writing it down. And after some coaching 
and some laughing and a little bit of crying, mostly me, I was finally able to convince her that by writing her story down, she would be able to tell it much easier. And you know what? She took that story and she created an iBook. She took that iBook and she published it on iTunes. And I'm proud to say she's published several books since. Now, Asia and my students have been creating stories like this for a while now, and I'm always impressed by their creativeness. But I wanted, to see, I wanted them to see if they could see other kids around the world and what they were creating. I also wanted them to make stories with kids from around the world. To make this happen, I reached out to colleagues back in Canada, and I found one school that was very excited to work with us. One teacher and I wanted to do something special, maybe something that's never been done before. He had mentioned that he had just finished a project with Minecraft. Minecraft. When I was a kid, the key word was, or the magic word was ice cream. Whenever somebody said the word ice cream, every kid in the room would be like, ooh, where's the ice cream, where's the ice cream? Today, the magic word is Minecraft. I can see some of the kids like Jason over here, his eyes lighting up when I said it. I think my daughter is playing Minecraft right now. I guess she's heard my speech too much. She's kind of bored, but that's okay. So what we did was we wanted to create stories. So we did something different. We decided to do choose your own adventure stories. In a choose your own adventure, the reader gets to decide what the character does next. This creates multiple storylines and multiple endings. To accomplish this in Minecraft Pocket Edition, we use signs. The students place signs in and around their world, and then they, uh, the reader or the player got to go through the story and decide which way the story would go. So some signs led to more signs, which led to some adventures, and some signs led to that fiery pit of death. Now, in the end, my students had collaborated on some pretty amazing stories. But they also learned about digital citizenship, cultural differences, and they, most importantly, they made new friends. Now, as much fun as it would be to play Minecraft every class, I wanted to explore a new way for my students to express themselves through digital storytelling. And around this time, there was a big push around the world for coding. Teachers, programmers, even celebrities were speaking out about the importance to learn to code. Now, learning to code isn't new. I'm sure some students here have taken ICT or robotic classes, and you've been learning coding for years. But the push now was for everyone to learn to code, not just kids that are interested in computer science or robotics. But do you think coding can be used in English class? And can coding be used to tell stories? Well, it can. So, and when you learn coding, and through my research, I learned that you learn a lot of different skills. You learn problem solving, critical thinking, logical, mathematical, and even creativity skills. Well, all of these skills are transferable to your story writing. What's probably the most important part of a story? To me, it's the problem. You have to create a difficult problem for your character and then help your character solve that problem. Also, to write a story, you need a lot of creativity. You have to create imaginative and unique characters and help them develop over the course of the story and reach the climax. But as an English teacher, I couldn't just teach coding and hope my students would transfer the skills over to story writing. I had to teach coding through storytelling. But I had one small problem. I hadn't taken a coding course in almost 20 years. Luckily, there were a lot of online resources for me to learn to code, but I wanted to learn the way my students were going to learn. So I focused on two avenues for learning. The first were iPad apps. Now, most of you here have probably heard of the blocky coding language Scratch. It's even being used in a lot of Korean schools today. Well, Scratch was developed by professors at MIT. What you probably haven't heard of is Scratch Junior. Scratch Junior, which is based on Scratch, but it's aimed for younger students. So I thought this would be the best place for me and my primary students to begin learning to code. So my students spent a couple of weeks with the app, and I'm happy to say that they were able to master the app, and they learned some basic concepts in coding. For my older students, I chose an app called Hopscotch. With Hopscotch, my students 
it was similar to Scratch, except it offered more advanced features that would challenge my upper elementary and middle school students. And what my students loved about Hopscotch is they could create their own games. So we spent a couple of weeks watching tutorials and customizing and creating our own games. Now the next avenue to learn was the Kano computer. The Kano computer is a new device that's built around the Raspberry Pi. The students get to literally build the computer. Once they build the computer, they have access to a unique operating system. Through the operating system, they have access to more blocky coding languages like Scratch, but they also have access to traditional coding languages like Python. So once my students were comfortable with, story with coding, it was time to introduce storytelling. Now when you begin a story, where do you usually begin? Well, my students begin with a storyboard. But for digital storytelling through coding, we had to come up with our own unique storyboard. On one side, you have the traditional brainstorming, character setting, problem. On the other side, my students had to figure out which coding concepts, functions, or values, or even loops that I could use to make all this happen over here. So once my students finished collaborating on their storyboards, they decided they wanted to break the story up into pieces. This would allow them to work individually on their code or even work in pairs. Once their coding was finished, they put it all together in iMovie. And in iMovie, they were easily able to add music, dialogue, and their own sound effects. Now, this process took quite some time. And some of you are probably wondering, why spend all this time creating a story with code when I could have done it on paper in less than half the time? Well, let me explain. Remember when I told you about some skills you learn, problem solving cre creativity? Well, one of the first things you learn while coding is that your code has to be very precise. You don't have any room for error. Well, when you're writing an essay, let's say you're writing your thesis statement, it has to be very specific. If it's not, your readers are going to have a hard time navigating through your essay. Also, when you learn coding concepts like loops, for example, you could take a 25-line code and crunch it down into five lines. Well, when you're writing a story, or sorry, when you're writing an essay, usually you start with a broad topic. And then what do you do? You narrow your focus. But probably most importantly is problem solving. Now, maybe some of you here have been part of the Minecraft PE beta testing. I know Jungwon has. Or maybe you have downloaded the snapshots for the PC version of Minecraft. Well, when a coder at Mojang decides to add one new feature to Minecraft, it breaks 10 old features. So the coders have to go back and tweak or even rewrite some of their old code. Well, I'm sure most of you here have gotten papers back from teachers loaded with red pen. I know I like the red pen. And what are the comments? Oh, you need more information, do more research, be more specific. Well, what do you do? Well, you do more research and you add more information. But then you have to go back to the beginning of your essay, your introduction, or the beginning of your story, and you have to revise it so it fits with everything else. So basically what you're doing is you're taking a larger problem like my story doesn't make any sense or my game doesn't work, and you're breaking it down into smaller problems. So as you can see, by learning coding through digital storytelling, you're building skills that you can use in many different areas. Digital storytelling has evolved, and it's still evolving. I'm really excited to see what you will create with future technologies. And so I'm going to leave you with this. I want you to imagine yourself as a character in your own story. You're a prince, you're a princess, you're a minion, now imagine yourself in an amazing setting. You're on the moon, you're underwater, you're underwater on the moon. Got that? Now imagine yourself in a life or death situation. You're in a deep dark cave, you just broke your last pickaxe, and you've got one torch left. That's for the Minecraft people. Now imagine yourself overcoming that problem. You've cheated and switched to creative, or you've found some TNT and blasted your way to the top. Now, hold on to that story. Hold on to it until you get home tonight or until you get to school on Monday. And challenge yourself to create the most imaginative 
and creative story possible. Thank you.